Wow, morning everybody. Uh, today I've just got a uh, list of um, jobs on my hand, so this is probably the um, the unattractive part of prepping, and that's uh, just uh, maintaining your uh, kit and equipment and the resources that you've got in place, making sure that they're uh, serviceable and they're going to work for you when you need them. And um, the jobs have been piling up, so uh, I'm going to make a start today, but. Uh, there's a job that needs doing on the trailer and I've um, put some time and effort into trying to find a new part for it which sounds fairly easy but like I say this is a 50 year old trailer so uh, not exactly on the shelf uh, in your local hardware store anymore <laughs> but I have had a stroke of luck and I'll share that with you. Okay so this hitch is what we've got a problem with uh, very simply it's got two uh, braking dampers on it so uh, this particular chamber here is full of uh, damping fluid and then there's a secondary one just here. Now over the years the seals in this unit have uh, perished and uh, the damping fluid has uh, leaked out. I've been keeping my eyes open for over a year now probably. Found a brand new one, never been fitted to a truck, has been on the shelf. There are a few little uh, scratches and uh, marks on it because uh, I dare say it's been uh, moved from store to store to store for the last uh, 50 years. So um, I was really, really uh, lucky to find that. And obviously, once this new damper's fitted, in all intensive purposes, this, this little trailer is practically brand new. The only thing that you could uh, do to this trailer now is to um, maybe find some new wheel bearings. And um, what I've done in the past is I've taken the shoe brakes off of it and sent them off to be relined and uh, put them back. But if I could find a couple of sets of uh, shoes for it, that would be absolutely uh, top notch and they would just live on the shelf, you know. So today we're going to change this damping unit. Got a brand new one, so let's show you that. I don't know about you, but I think that is just plain sexy. <laughs> Like I say, this unit is over 50 years old, so to find one uh, straight out of war storage that's never been issued, um, I've probably got more chance of winning the National Lottery. Eight bolts go right through the uh, towing arm, and uh, they're probably going to be less than straightforward to uh, get out, so four on this side and four on the other, but uh, we'll give it a go. This is uh, the first little job that we're going to try and get done today, fit this beautiful new towing. So I'm just checking over the uh, two hitches just to make sure they're exactly the same. Before I put the new one on, what I've got to do is just adjust that uh, bolt, that nice new silver bolt, to uh, the same uh, size as the black one below it. So I've um, got to put some adjustment on there and then it should uh, fit perfectly. But there's the new piece ready to go on. All I'm doing here is I've taken the bolts, this is just a drop of uh, white spirit and um, I'm getting all the kind of grease and muck and dirt off of them. Then I'm going to uh, go over them with a uh, wire brush, just take off the kind of surface rust. I'm going to be giving them a uh, once over with a bit of penetrating oil, drying them off and then I'm going to grease them up with some grease before I refit them. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, this is what a uh, very happy uh, cockroach looks like. Uh, I've put the new uh, towing hitch on and it went on uh, beautifully. Now I've just got to uh, do these uh, eight bolts up. I managed to find a spare coach bolt uh, in my workshop and I've uh, put that in in place of the one that I snapped off. Um, haven't got a uh, torque setting for these bolts, so I'm just going to go for the standard uh, uh, FT and leave you to work out what that one is. Um, but I'm going to get these uh, tightened up, then I'm going to be taking it for a little uh, test drive, make sure it's uh, working, and um, all good, nothing bad. So uh, this job pretty much cracked. Okay, so as I said, that's the old um, uh, hydraulic uh, towing damping unit off and I'll be sending that away to have some uh, new um, seals put in this uh, damper here which is leaking. But uh, apart from that, I might even get it sandblasted, give it a uh, nice uh, coat of paint, get some new seals put in it and then I'll be uh, selling it on. That's the new uh, um, braking damper towing hitch fitted and um, I'm over the moon with it like I say I mean I've been looking for one for over a year and for a brand new one to come along is um, just incredible just want to mention something else uh, if you're here in the UK this uh, red cable is called a breakaway cable and uh, what it does is it attaches to the um, base of the mechanism for the handbrake for the trailer but very simply, if the trailer was to uh, break away from the vehicle while you were towing it, what this cable does is it applies the, the handbrake. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's scarier. Um, a uh, three-quarter ton trailer in the middle of the carriageway with no lights with its brakes on, or a trailer that has broken away and is you know, hopefully rolling to the side of the road. But um, either way, it's a kind of nightmare scenario. The reason I mention it is even though this is a military spec um, trailer, um, if you don't have a breakaway cable fitted, um, here in the UK there's a £80, $120 fine, and you would get points on your licence. So here in the UK we have um, points for differing offences. But as soon as you collect 12 points, uh, you will get a driving ban uh, so um, for not having this fitted you would get three points and like I say uh, a um, 80 pound sterling fine the cable actually cost three pounds four and a half dollars um, I think people don't fit them because they're just not aware of the legislation okay little job number two that I've been trying to get done and remember to under seal it there's a little bit more work um, just up here. I don't know whether we can uh, see that. Just up here. Sort of goes along a bit. So this little bit is all new metal, as is this piece here. And that's quite a long strip. So now it's time to get the under seal out and uh, <coughs> make that good before the winter. So uh, another little job off the list. I've just uh, rubbed it down with a wire brush and I'm going to give it a good liberal um, covering of under seal and leave it to dry. Just a uh, you know, nice little tin, two inch paintbrush. Don't um, mess about with it. If you're going to do under sealing, you need to be uh, quite liberal about it. Another little trick is obviously wear your safety glasses and get yourself an old um, hat of some sort to wear because if you get this stuff in your hair, you will. So that's never what Tetra get it Seal looks like almost like a uh, bitumen or a tar and uh, like I say sticks to the bottom of the car dries give you weather seal for a uh, good um, 12 months So load the brush, no point messing around with jobs like this. Let's just get it on and get it done. You want to paint the piece of metal that uh, 
in my case is new but also try and overlap it by sort of two to four inches either side Okay, so I hope you can see uh, what I've done there, but um, that's where the uh, new piece of steel was welded in into the internal floor, and uh, that's the under seal. Try to go sort of two to four inches uh, either side of the uh, repair that you're trying to um, protect, and uh, that should sort of weather seal it for the coming winter. But of course, if you don't, if you forget to um, uh, under seal the uh, repair all that happens is that repair will only last you about 12 months or so and it would rot at the edges where the new piece of steel has been welded in so uh, that's another little job off the list people that's the uh, under seal I've been meaning to do for about uh, eight weeks since it was last repaired I don't know whether you can see that, but they're little drops of under seal that have uh, splashed off of the brush and onto my uh, safety glasses. And uh, obviously, without them, you know, that muck would have gone uh, straight in your face or in your eyes. Wow, so the last time I went out with uh, Funky Prepper and we um, took the trucks uh, off roading into the woods, um, I ended up uh, breaking the aerial. It was just a standard kind of uh, aerial. So what I'm going to do is replace this with a rubber kind of flexible one. Let's show you that. Okay, so I've just taken the uh, aerial out of the box for you, but that's basically it. And uh, fits in the wing as normal. Um, I'll show you a few tricks as to how to run the wiring um, before we uh, cut and take out the old one. But this is uh, the greatest kind of off-road 4x4 aerial that you could uh, fit and um, it didn't cost a fortune either, about £10, £15. Yes, and how many years can a mountain exist? Wow, okay, so uh, got the um, towing hitch changed on the trailer, very pleased with that. Got the under sealing done in the truck and I got a little bit carried away there. Did a bit more um, digging around, but on a 20 year old truck, as soon as you get under there with a wire brush, man, you could be there all day. <laughs> and the final thing was, uh, got my little uh, aerial changed for the rubber one. The trick with running a new aerial is a really simple one. Um, get your new aerial and uh, tape the um, end of it to the old wiring coming out of the bulkhead on the truck. So put the two together, loads of masking tape, and then feed it through, and then just pull the aerial through. That's the really simplest way of doing it. Obviously, you have to just drop the fuse board or um, the shield uh, that hides all the wiring under the dash, and then just take your time, see where it goes, and gently feed it through until you find out where it should go. But uh, pretty straightforward job, really. A little bit fiddly, you know, it's all sort of clips, and you've got to be careful you don't break anything. But uh, apart from that, um, that's uh, Roach's day, really. So, um, as always, thanks for coming along. Really appreciate uh, all of your comments, your subscriptions, your interest in uh, what I'm up to. But uh, this is the hardest thing about being a prepper, about checking your equipment, about making sure it's serviceable and uh, it's ready for, if anything happens, you know, long-term unemployment, uh, uh, man-made catastrophe, who knows. But uh, this is the hard bit. This is staying on top of your kit and equipment when there's absolutely nothing going on. As always, YouTube, any comments? Love to hear them. Back soon.